Hello, welcome to ResoCoder. In a couple of previous tutorials we made a class called person and we also created a programmer which inherits from person. It makes sense, programmer is after all just a person with addition of some programming specific stuff. This means that a programmer can do everything that the person is able to do. Now let's create a walk method which will simply print a distance to the console. This method will be in the person class. So here is the person class and let's add the walk method. This will be just simply public void walk and it's gonna print out a distance to the console. So I walked 1000 meters. Now we can simply instantiate a person or a programmer which inherits from person and call this new method. So all the way down here. We have a programmer Jeff and now he is talking, but we want him to walk, so we are gonna change this talk to walk. As you can see, even though that Jeff is a programmer, he can also walk. We can also create a person Paul and let's put some random values over here. And let's also make this Paul walk. And let's run this. And yeah, both Jeff and Paul walked 1000 meters. It's awesome that everything is working nicely, but what if we want to add an animal class? Animals surely cannot derive from person because they cannot talk. However, every animal can walk. It would be certainly nice if we could somehow make animals walk. You might be thinking, why don't we just add the walk method to the animal class and call it a day? We could, but let's see what will we lose by leaving out interfaces from the process. So let's go all the way up here and we are gonna create a class animal. And this will have only one public void method called walk and it's also gonna print out a distance to the console. And as you can see animals walk 5000 meters as opposed to persons which walk only 1000 meters. Now let's say that we want to group every class that has a method called walk inside an array. We can group regular persons with programmers because remember every programmer is also a person. So let's go to the main method and we will create an array of type person. It's gonna be called people and it's gonna be equal to new person of length 3. Let's add Jeff and Paul to this array. So our programmer Jeff will be on the zero index and Paul will be in the second element. And we can make both of these array elements walk. Let's comment out these first two calls to the walk method directly on the Jeff and Paul objects. And I should change this index to be 1. And it's gonna display the exact same thing as before because actually the zero index is Jeff and the first index is Paul. So no changes here. Now let's try to add an animal into this array. So people index 2 is equal to new animal. And when we try to add an animal into this array it's gonna show us an error. It's obvious that animal is not a person. But suppose that we really just want everything which is able to walk grouped together. All we want to do with those grouped things is to make them walk. As you might have guessed, this is when interfaces come into play. An interface simply defines some methods or properties about which I will create a separate tutorial. The important thing here is that it only defines them. Interface does not supply any implementation. Then every class which implements an interface must also have all of the methods from the interface. It can also be treated in terms of that interface. Let's see what I mean by that in practice. So let's go all the way up. Here we want to create an interface called iWalking. So interface iWalking and all of the interface names should always start with i. And this interface will have just one method called walk and it will return void. Interfaces define just plain methods. There are no access modifiers or things like virtual methods. Actually, every method that's in an interface must be implemented as public. And now let's implement this interface to animal class, so colon iWalking. And also person will have this interface implemented. And because there are already public void methods called walk inside both of these classes, we don't get any errors. However, if I delete for example this method called walk from an animal class, down here it says that animal does not implement interface member iWalking.walk and that is an error. So let's put that method back. Now that we have created and implemented the iWalking interface, let's again create an array, but this time it will be of type iWalking. So let's go to the main method again, delete this line which gives us an error, and this time we are gonna create iWalking array, this will be called creatures, 
and it's gonna be equal to new eye walking and the length will be 3. Now the first element will again be our programmer Jeff, the second element will be our person Paul and now comes the awesome part because the third element will be an animal. Note that the creature in the first element is good old programmer Jeff. He can walk and talk. If we just take Jeff here, we can call talk and we can also call walk. But when we take him from the array, he is no longer of type programmer, but rather I walking. Now the only thing he can do is walk. So creatures at the index of zero, this is our Jeff, and now he can only walk. As you can see here, there is no method called talk over here. Now, because we've been able to group together everything that is able to walk, we can loop through the whole array and make everyone walk. And I will use a fancy for each loop, but the classic for loop would do just fine. So for each var creature in creatures, and we want to make all of the creatures walk. So we will call creature dot walk. Let's comment out these two calls to walk and let's launch this. And as you can see, the first creature walked 1000 meters because he's a programmer, which is also a person. The second creature, Paul, which is just a person, walked also 1000 meters. And the last creature, which is an animal, walked 5000 meters. The last thing which you should know about interfaces is this. A class can inherit only from one base class. It can, however, implement multiple interfaces. Do you want to finally find a good calculator for your Android smartphone? Download OneCalc, the simple scientific calculator made with you in mind. Customize it to your liking, choose from lots of beautiful material themes and most importantly, save time. Be efficient, use OneCalc. Get it on Google Play from the link in the description. So that were the basics of interfaces in C Sharp. There's a lot more to cover, including exciting things like generics. If you don't want to miss my new videos, subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button. If you want to learn even more, go to the link in the video description, which is gonna take you to resocoder.com. There will be a bunch of coding assignments and exercises, because learning by doing is just gonna make the acquired knowledge stick so much more. If this video helped you, please give it a like and also share it. Leave a comment, follow me on social media and see you in the next video.